Efficiency, flotation and stability. Archimedes principle. When a stationary body is completely submerged in a fluid or floating so that it is only partially submerged, the resultant fluid force acting on the body is called the buoyant force. Not that the forces F1, F2, F3 and F4 are simply the forces exerted on the plane surface. W is the weight of the shaded fluid volume and FB is the force the body is exerting on the fluid. The forces on the vertical surface such as F3 and F4 are all equal and cancelled. So the equilibrium equation of interest is in the z direction and can be expressed as this one. We could write FB equal F2 minus F1 minus Mg. The description of this one can be simplified in figure 1 here. So, for example, if we have a, a fully submerged object like this, so it, we have F3 here and then we have F4 here. And then to calculate the F4 and F3 here, we will use the calculation of horizontal force. So it means that we need to calculate the force, the horizontal force, based on the projection area. So both forces, F4 and F3 here, will use the projection area of this one. So it means it may be, uh, become the rectangular area like this one. So it means because they are using the same area, so it means that the magnitude of force 4 and for force 3 here is equal. Then the direction is opposite, so uh, F3 could cancel the magnitude force of F4. So that's why in this statement, we could say that F3 and F4 are equal and cancel. So and then we have vertical force. So for sure we have weight. So all the, all the body will feel the weight. So this is the weight here. So and then we have a buoyancy force that comes from bottom to the top like this one. So according to this equilibrium in forces, so we could write as so F2 here is equal to weight plus the F1. So, or we could write as this one, force of buoyancy is equal F2 minus F1 minus Fg. So, how about the force of buoyancy here? So, we could simplify it as Okay, the simplest one is to calculate the F1 here. So, we need to calculate the by using the equation of rho g and volume for one so and this volume is actually the volume from here to the free surface like this one so means all the all the volume of this uh, liquid need to be calculated so we could get f1 the magnitude for f1 So and then to calculate the magnitude of F2, okay, we, are, we need to consider the surface of this one. So and then the equation is remain the same, which is the rho g and volume 2 here. But volume 2 is volume of liquid of this surface onto the free surface like this one. So and then the difference of these two forces mean the difference of F2 minus F1. So and here we need to calculate as F2 minus F1 because for sure force from F2 is bigger compared to force of F1. Because we could see here the volume of water uh, substitute into the equation is larger compared to the volume for F1. So F2 minus F1, so we could get if we uh, deduct the volume, so it is equal actually rho G and delta V. 
V because we need to deduct the volume of green area with the volume of the red area. So the remain volume in this calculation is the volume of the volume that displaced by the object. Displaced by the object. Okay, the object. So and then we know that force F2 here is bigger compared to F1. So means that the resultant force is from bottom to the top like this. So and then if the weight of this object is lighter, means it is uh, lower than the resultant force here. So mean the resultant force here could float, could push the object here to the surface of water. So that direction is its create phenomenon to buoyant the object. So that's why the delta F or the F2 minus F1 here will be equal as Fb because the resultant of F2 minus uh, F1 will create buoyant force. So in this chapter, buoyant force is will be denoted as Fb. If the specific weight of the fluid is constant, then we could calculate the difference of F2 minus F1 is equal to rho g h2 minus h1a. So here you need to imagine that we have a, a, cylinder, a cylinder object like this. So a here is the cross-sectional area for this cylinder object. So h2 minus h1 means we need to calculate the force at point number 2 here. So we need to calculate the depth of H2 and then the pressure at point number 1 here. So we need to calculate using the depth for H1. So we have rho G H2 minus H1 times A, where A is the horizontal area of the upper or lower surface. And equation 1 can be written as this one. Simplifying, we arrive at the desired expression for the buoyance force. It can be calculated as Fb equal rho G and V. Please bear in mind, V here is the volume of the displaced water, of the displaced liquid. Archimedes principle states that the buoyant force has a magnitude equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body and is directed vertically upward. Thus, we conclude that the buoyant force passes through the centroid of the displaced volume as shown in figure 1c. So this is the centroid of the volume and then the force of buoyancy passing will passing through the centroid here. Please bear in mind that for submerged area, the center of buoyancy or the centroid of the submerged area is different compared uh, depend on the situation of the submerged uh, area. This is a, an, uh, simple uh, a simple example for the buoyancy force. A spherical buoy has a diameter of 1.5 meter with 8.50 kN and is anchored to the sea floor with a cable as shown in figure 2a. Although the buoy normally floats on the surface, at certain time the water depth increases so that the buoy is completely immersed as is illustrated. For this condition, what is the tension of the cable? So in this question, we uh, imagine, I think uh, everybody agree here, so buoy will float on, on water surface like this one. However, if the sea water increase, so the buoy uh, will uh, stand like this because we have a cable to pull the buoy. So from this uh, 
application, we could draw a, uh, a free body diagram like this one. So we have a tension that pulling the boy downward like this. So and then the boy uh, need to go upward like this because the buoyancy force occur and at the same time the gravity will pull the object downward like this one. So and then in force Force in equilibrium can be written like this one. Tension plus weight will be equal to force of buoyancy. And then because we need to calculate the, the magnitude of tension, so uh, we could rewrite, we could rearrange the equation become Fb, force of buoyancy minus weight of buoy. So force of buoyancy can be calculated using this equation, rho, g, and volume. And this volume is the volume of displaced fluid. So, because in this uh, phenomenon, all the boy is here, so means there is a volume of water that previously located in this area need to be displaced. So, we, we need to calculate the what is the volume of this fluid that being removed from its original position. So, this volume is actually equal to the volume of this object. So to simplify this calculation, we just need to calculate the volume of the sphere. So this is the equation for volume for sphere. So we, we get the buoyant force is equal to 17.77 kilonewton. So and then we deduct with 8.5 the weight of the buoy itself. So we found that the tension here is 9.27 kilonewton.